Okay, I'm having a mental block trying to figure out my next fur brush, how to recreate it. So we're going to take a little break, and I am going to show you how to make a tessellated pattern, which is basically squares, triangles, and hexagons. I'm going to start off with a base here of a hexagon. I'm going to put this at 9%. This right here, by the way, is in the shapes set that I showed you how to make. Once again, we're at the middle of 9%. And I'm going to tap this onto the screen. And we'll just zoom in on it here. And we're going to duplicate a couple of times, merge it down, duplicate, merge down, and then we're going to flip it. Why the heck does it do that? I never have figured that out. I didn't put anything over here. All right, we're going to flip that horizontal. Merge it down. Get rid of whatever that is. Alright, duplicate it. And flip it vertical. This makes it as solid as I possibly can. And we're going to go up a layer. Let's kind of put this down. Opacity around 50%. On layer 2... I'm going to go down here to my square 2. That's the slightly thicker one. And it is set for 4%. So we tap that in here. And as you can see, it matches pretty good there. But, once again, being so small, it's going to have issues. So we're going to duplicate that and merge it down. Duplicate it, merge it down. Duplicate it, flip it horizontal. Duplicate it, flip it vertical. And then I'm going to use my selection tool under automatic. I'm going to select the inside and the outside. And then I'm going to clear. And that makes a nice, clean, clear square. And we're going to put this in a hexagon pattern. So we're going to duplicate it and rotate it 30 degrees. And as you can see, that matches up right here and right here. And I just need to make sure that that blue dot, the one right here, goes into this corner, which is right here. And that way I know that it is properly aligned. And then I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to flip it horizontal. That's the same thing as making it minus 30 degrees. And once again, we'll put the blue dot, well, we would put the blue dot if it was there. We'll put that right there, match it in. And then we're going to merge these three layers down. We will duplicate and flip horizontally and move this up. Let's make this easy. I'm going to go to Snapping. And I'm going to turn magnetics on. And that way I can just simply raise it directly up and make sure that the corners match in. You can see that right there. And this creates the squares with the hexagon there in the middle. I can now get rid of layer 1 and merge layer 2's together. And then we're going to duplicate these, and we're going to start overlapping. 
you can see how that actually creates the triangle. Very nice. And I want to go six up. And there we go. We've got our first little group here. I'm going to slide all of these layers to the right and click on group. We can then duplicate this group, move it over, and then I'm going to move it down. And I want these squares to match up as well. And let's go ahead and turn the magnetics off. That way we can move it freely in any direction. And there we go. And we want this to have four going across. So I'm going to combine it down. You tap on the word new group here. And then this third one down is combined down. And then we duplicate it. And we slide this over. And let's go ahead and turn those magnetics back on for this because we know that they should be perfectly aligned. And there we go. Let's take both of these groups, slide them all the way over here. I'm going to do another combine down, duplicate, And we'll slide this over to here. And I'm not really liking how that has turned out. Let's tap that like that. There we go. All right, so now we have our nice little pattern. We'll combine this down, and then I'm going to flatten. Now, the reason I made so many iterations here is if you look... Let me start up a new layer. And this is good enough. You want something close to a square shape. However, this is a rectangle shape here. And to minimize the rectangle shape, we're going to go one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Just like this. And that way when we resize it and change the shape to that of a square, it's not going to be as noticeable. So the first thing I want to do... Let's clear this. And I want to create crosshairs. I'm going to just simply zoom way in here. I'm going to do my selection. And this time I'm going to choose rectangle, which is the third one right here. And then I'm going to grab this. 
and I'll do a copy and paste. And there we have a nice little rectangle going. Looks like it's a little wider than I want it to be, but it should be okay. Let's duplicate that. I'm going to stretch it out all the way this direction. And I'm going to duplicate it again and stretch it all the way out in this direction. And then I'm going to pinch these three layers together. We'll duplicate it and rotate it 30 degrees. Let's see, is that good? No, it needs to go 60 degrees. There we go. And that will correspond to the lower left and upper right and the lower right and upper left corners. I'm going to duplicate the same one again. And we're going to go 6, 0, minus to flip it the other way. And then just to make my life easy, I'm going to duplicate it again. And this time I'm going to hit this rotate 45 degrees down here twice. One, two. And that gives us perfect crosshairs for our corners. Let's merge these four layers together. And... What I want to do is match these up left, right, up, and down into the six corners. There's an extra line going up and down that will be useful whenever we're cropping. Let's see, maybe go down a tick. And let's look. Whoops. I want to move the paper, not the picture. Up, go up one. Over there. And that's about as close as we can get it. And then we're going to duplicate that. And we're just going to move it all the way down to here. and match it up here. Just like that. And now let's do the other two corners. And this shows us where we're going to crop our design here so that we can get a repeating pattern. I'm going to merge these together. And then I'm just going to slide layer 2 to the right so that both layers are selected. And we're going to slide this to the right. And you will see right here it matches directly on the edge. Now we need to know how many ticks it takes for it to go off the edge. Let's zoom in about there. I can see it okay. And we go one, two, and it has indeed disappeared. So it's going to be one tick over to cut that line in half. And then we're going to come over here and do the same thing.
And then we'll do the same thing going up and down. Okay, now that we have this all set up like this, I'm going to make sure that the magnetics is turned off. And I'm going to say fit the screen. And you can see it is not the same up and down as it is left to right. So let's go ahead and bring that down again. I want to move it here towards the middle. And then I'm going to press the little tick here. Any of these blue ticks will work. I'm going to use the one here on the right. And you see the dimensions say three or 1381 and 1314. You click on this chain symbol here to decouple those coordinates or sizes. And let's make them both 1381. So, 1381. Something to note here, if you type in too slowly, then you're going to have this happen. Just type it in correctly, real fast, and it'll snap back. As long as you haven't gotten out of the dimensions, you're okay. Then tap on any of these other little blue dots. I'm going to use this one right here at the bottom right. And now, when I say fit the canvas, you can see that it matches up just fine. Seems to be a little bit of a extra fuzz going on there. So what I want to do is just kind of drag this one, whoops, let's go to distort, and drag this one so that it hits the corner of the triangle. But I need to see the size actually displayed here. Let's try freeform. I always get freeform and distort confused and you can see here that the height is changing so now I can drag it so that it's right there at that corner and then let that go let's look at this corner here that looks better let's check the top see if we had the same problem we did not so there we go we now have this lovely pattern I can turn off the From selection, or even just delete it. And we've got this Layer 2 here. If I duplicate it, you notice it gets a little darker. I can flip it horizontally, merge it down, duplicate it, flip it vertically, and we now have a dark, clear pattern. So I'm going to invert this, copy it, and invert it. And then I'm going to go to my Build On 3 here, and I'm going to start up a new brush. I'm going to go down here to Grain, Edit, Import, Paste, and then click Done and Done. Let's go to the zoom here where it says cropped. Turn it all the way down until it says follow size. Go to Apple Pencil. And let's turn this opacity right here all the way down. Go to Properties. And orient to screen is good to have for patterns like this. I'm going to say maximum size 400. 
We'll give this a done. We'll create a new layer. And let's test out our tessellated pattern. That's pretty darn good. Go to maximum size. And there you go. And one of the things that a pattern like this is good for is if we go to distort and we grab the corners at the top and move them in and then scrunch it down a little bit, you can create a lovely tiled floor pattern this way. Quick and easy. Some other patterns you might want to try. This one I use just squares and triangles. And I put them next to each other. And you get this pattern. And then I've got this one. which is the one we just created, which I actually took several stabs at. You can see that one did not work well. That was the one where I used the middles. So let's delete that, because I don't like it. And we've got this one. This is where I used a 3x3 three three pattern. You can see that it's stretched up and down a little bit more. So I'm going to not like that one, and I'm going to delete it. And we've got this one. The same deal, 3x3. Three three. And then you can actually do this one. So instead of matching up the squares, overlapping them, I put them side by side. So that's another tessellated pattern you can try. Um, if you want to see examples of other tessellated patterns, just type in tessellated pattern. You will see Escher's famous lizard pattern, as well as many more. I hope that you have enjoyed this and that it helps you out. And I hope you have a wonderful day.